Hey YouTube, welcome to RV High Altitude. I am Jason, and this episode we are at the Trout Creek Recreation Area. Uh, it's right on the easternmost edge of the Flat Tops Wilderness National Park, um, and that's right at the base of the Flat Tops Mountain Range here. We're at an altitude of 8,060 feet, and our GPS is north 40 degrees, 14 minutes, 18 seconds by west 107 degrees 5 minutes and 35 seconds um, this is a gorgeous place let's go ahead and go take a look around the trout creek recreation area is located 10 miles northwest of the little town of oak creek colorado at the junction of county road 132a and county road 29. so trout creek recreational area is sort of unique it is right on the very edge of the Flat Tops Wilderness National Park. Um, and it actually, the recreation area here forms like a little peninsula off the park itself. It's actually surrounded on three sides by ranches, uh, privately owned ranches. So right behind me in the trees there um, is the recreation area. And everything in front of me and to the side where this Jeep is coming by, all of that down there, all the way to the road itself, is ranches. So it's kind of an odd little uh, chunk of the national park, but it's here. I even, when I first discovered it, I went to the office of the national park here and asked him about it to make sure it was okay to be camping here because uh, the camping spots are rough and stuff. And he said, no, it's fine. So here we are. So those trees right in front of us are the recreation area. And then as we swing around here, you can see the ranch area start right there. There's somebody's private driveway. And as we come around, you can see this beautiful hay pasture there. And looking down the valley there, you can start to see uh, some haystacks and there's some stock ponds down there. Um, and so you kind of get an idea that, that we're surrounded by ranches here. The peninsula shape is formed by the road on the front there and then on each side of the recreation area runs one of these irrigation ditches. The irrigation ditches go on to feed the ranching operations further down the valley uh, where they're keeping cows and they have some stock ponds with some uh, little duck families in there and uh, stuff like that. But what we're actually here for is Trout Creek itself which runs down the middle of the recreation area. Uh, so let's go take a look at that and the surrounding wilderness. The first thing I notice about Trout Creek is it's very densely wooded uh, so it's good to keep a compass with you just in case. It's easy to get turned around in there sometimes. Next thing I notice about Trout Creek recreation area is Trout Creek itself. It runs right down the center of the recreation area and for the most part it runs fast and straight like in these pictures but I think I might have seen a spot upstream that I might be able to catch a fish at. So let's go ahead and go try. I'm going to go ahead and head up this path towards the creek there and see if I can find a good spot. Alright, let's see if Trout Creek lives up to its name. See if I can get my line out without snagging it. I don't know, it might be a little too fast right through here, but... It's a place to start. And, and I already have a snag. Well, I'll be back with you as soon as I get this technical difficulty figured out. As I'm looking around for a better spot to fish, I notice that the entire area is covered with wildflowers. Uh, it's just gorgeous. My friend Heidi would love this place. I think I see a good spot right up here to try my luck at fishing again. Oh, I about went in the river there. All right, I'm trying my luck at a, a different spot with hopefully fewer snags. It's a little bit slower down here. I know the camera can't see down in there, but there's like a nice little river bend. And we'll see if we can have a little luck here. Um, one thing that I can say is just like lots of places, there's some serious bugs here. Um, big, huge deer flies and big, huge horse flies. And I forgot to put off on before, before I walked up the little path here. 
Um, so I'm not sure how long I'll be able to hold out. But we'll try to catch a, a trout here and see if it lives up to its name. Um, I'll get back with you later if I catch something. Well, no luck on the fishing. Time to head back to camp. Gorgeous. It definitely gets a thumbs up from me. Um, yeah, just spectacular. Okay, well, it's that time of the show where we kind of take a look around at the camping spot itself. Uh, the Trout Creek Re Recreation Area is an unfinished campground. Um, they only have really one amenity, and that's one vault toilet over there. Uh, other than that, there's just kind of some nice little uh, flat areas with, with a little bit of gravel on them, uh, and that's it. There's people have made handmade fire pits out of the rocks and stuff. Um, there's, uh, of course, no number system, and there's no charge for camping here, which is, which is great. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look around uh, at the camping area, and I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. Here's an example of the fire rings you'll find here at each of the spots at Trout Creek. Uh, it's kind of first come first serve on who gets the most established spots and as you can see they're all sort of do it yourself or fire rings to begin with. I am able to actually get a radio station at this campground here at Trout Creek. Um, I'm kind of surprised because we're pretty much out in the middle of nowhere but I don't know I kind of like a little bit of radio after, after dinner kind of sitting by the fire kind of like it so this is another plus for the, this recreation area at Trout Creek. Here's the vault toilet I mentioned earlier what can I say it's an outhouse. Okay so here's some more bugs those are all deer flies right there waiting for me to go outside oh did you see that little squirrel run by wow anyway gotta watch out for those mean bugs. Okay so right here at my camping spot there's one of those irrigation ditches that run by it, but it actually looks more like just a tiny little creek. So it's like having a tiny little creek running right outside the Winnebago here. Um, just another cool thing about Trout Creek. I've got the Jenny running a little bit to blow up my air mattress um, and charge my camera batteries. I am going to obey generator etiquette and not leave it running too late into the evening. Um, and it also isn't as loud as, as some generators I've heard before, but um, I'm only going to run it for a little while just to get caught up on things. All right, what a nice camping area, huh? I really like it. Um, it's nice and out of the way and quiet here. I have one neighbor over there. They're really nice. I was just talking to him. Um, so yeah, nice, quiet, out of the way place. Um, okay, so it's that part of the show where I kind of like to do a technical segment. Um, and this week, I wanted to talk about first aid. Uh, earlier today, I was at the gas station and I managed to cut my thumb open on my gas cap. I, I didn't even know that, that that could happen, but it did. Uh, so I jumped in, in the Winnebago here and got out my first aid supplies and disinfected it and put this nice little band-aid on there and I got to thinking well maybe this week we'll talk about first aid kits and other medical supplies that uh, a person should take with them uh, when they go into a remote high altitude setting it's very important that you bring everything you need to make sure that you're safe uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I bring with me and maybe it'll give you some ideas on stuff that you could bring with you on your next RV trip into the mountains Okay, the first thing I want to say is I'm not a doctor. So if you see anything that I'm doing today that you like and you want to try, run it by your doctor first because everybody's needs are different and it's important that you stay safe. Okay, um, when I head up into the boondocks in the mountains, I like to take a lot of first aid supplies because you're a long way from help up there um, and first aid supplies become very important in an emergency. Um, so the first thing I want to show you is just your basic first aid kit. Uh, this is absolutely essential to have in your RV. You get it down at the Superstore or at your auto parts store. Uh, it just basically has uh, some adhesive bandages, uh, some alcohol swabs, some tweezers, uh, some tape, some gauze pads, just your basic first aid stuff. So you, you need to make sure you have one of these. Uh, and I also like to take what I consider an expanded first aid kit, um, and that consists of this stuff. Um, latex gloves. Hydrogen peroxide to disinfect. 
rubbing alcohol also to disinfect some germex so you can disinfect your hands some aloe vera for bug bites and sunburn some big adhesive bandages more little adhesive bandages big gauze pads tape um, and it's the non-glue kind of tape some regular tape some triple antibiotic cream some aspirin some cotton balls some cotton swabs I also like to take one of these emergency blankets it's the, like it looks like tin foil um, and they're really good uh, at keeping heat in so I carry one of those uh, I carry a snake bite kit it's also for uh, wasps and bee stings too it's a vacuum pump kit um, and so that's kind of all the first aid stuff I take with me. Uh, I also carry some medical equipment that's for me personally. Uh, like many of you, I bet, um, I have some medications that I have to take every day. Uh, I make sure that I have enough with me for the trip that I'm taking, and then I actually take a little bit extra. Uh, so if I'm delayed, I'll still have enough uh, to keep me healthy when I'm gone. I also take some epinephrine auto-injector pens and some liquid Benadryl. Uh, I'm allergic to bee stings and assorted other bug bites and this medication makes it possible for me to get from the boondocks in the mountains to the hospital for treatment. Uh, so that's really important for me. And last but certainly not least, I carry an oxygen tank. I've had some breathing problems in the past, uh, so when heading up into a high altitude environment where the air is thinner with less oxygen, um, it's imperative that I take some precautions in case I get lightheaded or I start um, being short of breath, I can go ahead and get on some oxygen while I get down to a safer altitude. That's never happened, but it might, so it's important to be prepared. And that's kind of what the takeaway from this, I hope, will be. Um, make sure you have all the medical equipment that you need when you're taking your RV out, and then double check all your medical equipment to make sure. And then the day that you're heading out, as part of your vehicle inspection, go ahead and check all your stuff a third time just to make sure, because this is the most important stuff that you can pack in your RV. Um, all right, well, I guess that's all my medical stuff. All right, YouTube, I guess that's about it from Trap Creek Recreational Area. This is a wonderful place to RV camp. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, so next time, we're going to be up at Chambers Reservoir or maybe Sheriff's Reservoir. That's another 1,000 feet up in altitude. So that should be a good show. I want to thank everybody for watching. If you like my video, you could go ahead and give it the thumbs up. Uh, or you su could subscribe to my channel and see all my RV videos. Or you could tell your friends and family about my videos if you think they'd like to watch them. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time on RV High Altitude. Ooh.